So I'm going to walk through the performance that we've just done on circuit. Um, everything that you heard uh, in that performance came directly from the box itself. So you can see it's a really comprehensive uh, system for creating your ideas, uh, but also for performance as well. So the first thing that I did was load in the appropriate session and then I hit play and went to synth 2, which were the chord parts initially. And then I went to the effects page. Um, so we have two different types of effects. We have a reverb and a delay. And you get to the effects page by just pressing the effects button. And if you want to select um, the delay, just simply press the delay. Uh, you have a choice of 16 different types of delay. If you want to change the reverb, you can do that from the uh, row of white uh, pads, uh, which are the reverb pads. So we started off with a, um, a delay, and I brought the synth line in, so I'll hit play. Now the macro controls at the top here, these are now dry wet controls for your effects. So to go to the delay, I just use the dry wet control to bring that up. And then I went to the reverb and did the same there. So I just brought the reverb up a touch just to give it a nice bit of shimmer. So the next thing was to go to the mixer page. Now in the mixer page we have different types of controls. The top row of pads are your mute switches. So I unmuted the hi-hat and the snare drum part, so drum three and four. Again, in the mixer control, the knobs at the top here now become your volume controls. So you've got mute switches on the pads and volume controls on the macros. So I'll unmute the hi-hats and the snare part, although there aren't any uh, drums on there at the moment. And then I'll go to the drum sequencer. Now the top two rows here are controlling the hi-hat. It's an open hi-hat sound that I've chosen. The bottom rows, you can see there are no steps placed on here at the minute, but that's where the snare drum hits were placed. So, before I place the snare drum, I used a really, really nice feature that we've got on the circuit, which is automation, or recording automation. To do that, we just hit the record button, and you see the playheads turn red to tell us we're in record mode. Now, I wanted to get this open hi-hat sound to sound a little bit more like a closed hi-hat, so I used the decay control to ride that and open it and close it to give it a bit more of a sort of a natural hi-hat sound. So the second macro control is your decay control, and by using that, we can record this uh, pattern in and give it a nice, a nice kind of natural feel and a, and a great way of making the hi-hats feel like they're being played more naturally. So I came out to record, and it's, it keeps that automation. And you can see on the LED underneath the macro control uh, the, uh, the, that's moving and that's uh, showing us that we have automation on that particular control. So after that, I decided I was gonna put some snare drum parts down as well. So initially I used the uh, offbeat there. And um, then I thought I would place uh, some extra drum hits on the last four steps and use the automation to play around with the pitch. So I put the uh, steps in and then use the first macro control to change the pitch in our drum sampler. If I hit record, that automation is then captured and is kept as part of that drum sequence. So that was the first section, just building up the drums, getting them fired up a bit more. Then I went through to synth 2 and started playing around with the parameters of that instrument and started to build up the sound a little bit more as well. And finally, when I was ready, I went to the mixer page and I had synth one, which was the bass line, and I have two different kick drum patterns on drum one and drum two. So when I hit, I'll hit play again, and when I was ready to drop them in, I just used the mute switches to bring them in at the appropriate points. See, it's nice and easy to start your ideas off and then develop those out with uh, the effects and the, uh, and the mixer. Now once that was done, I went to the synth one part and started to play around with the parameters again. So just to demonstrate this, I'll mute everything else out so we can just listen to synth one. Go to the controller page and now the eight macros control different parameters for this synth instrument. So I was just playing around with these, just adding different uh, parts to the sound, playing around with that. So this is adding some nice variance to what I'm doing. It just keep it, keeps the music uh, flowing and nice. And it's actually treating circuit just like an instrument. I'm doing the performance, really. And again, in the record mode, I can uh, tweak this and, and capture those automations that I'm, I'm playing. So 
After that, we went to the sessions page. So I'll just bring all the mutes uh, back in so we can hear what I'm going to do. So we've made all the changes to those sounds and I went back to the sessions page and I have the same sessions stored on this next pad. So I've changed the sounds a little bit. So even though the music is still flowing and it's the same notes, effectively same rhythms and that sort of thing, um, I can use the next session to change the sound up. So this is like the track proper now. Now you'll notice that uh, on the synth one part, we've got a really nice sort of side chaining sound as well. And this is a great way of getting a nice pumping sound, a bit of movement to the uh, synth lines. So to access the side chain, just go to the side chain page. And on the top row here, we have varying different degrees of side chain available to us. The side chain is being controlled um, by the drum one part. And that's actually triggering the, uh, the pumping effect. So we can actually turn off the side chain completely with the red pad, but the other white pads give you varying degrees of side chain effect. So we'll bring the other stuff back in there. So the next step is to go to the patterns page and explore how we can use patterns to develop this uh, musical idea and musical phrases. And the first bass line is set across the first four pads that we have in the pattern of synth one. So when I got to the end of the musical phrase, I wanted to create a new four bar pattern. So I press here and here, and now this gives me um, another four bar phrase, um, which are empty at the moment. So I'm gonna record directly into these and create a new uh, phrase. So in the synth page, I have access to a keyboard and I just go into record mode and just basically record directly in, into my sequencer. Now I'm using the keyboard at the top, uh, at the top two rows of the page and this is set to be a chromatic keyboard. So you can see the way it's set up here. We have two black notes and three black notes and then those are uh, the white notes, if you like, of a, of a standard keyboard. But another really cool feature that we have in Circuit is the scales modes. Now to get to scales, you just press the scales button and you can see I have my uh, two separate uh, color rows. The rows at the bottom represent the different preset scales that are in and the final one is the chromatic uh, keyboard. If I choose the first pad, for example, now you can see in the keyboard above the notes that will be played as part of that scale, which is a minor scale in this instance. So if I go back to the synth page, you see now we have two rows and these represent an octave each. So we have two octaves worth of scales. If I want to change the scale type, I can choose a different one from the scales page. And you can hear now how we have a different two octave scale keyboard. So we have a good choice of different scales available to us from the scales page. But if you do want a standard chromatic keyboard, it is there, of course. Another great thing that we've got in Circuit is the ability to open up um, a two octave keyboard in our synth page as well. So pressing shift and note will expand that control and now give me a full two octaves to play. So we added that extra pattern, uh, that extra musical phrase, and uh, we'll go, yeah, we'll hit play again. Go back to the sessions page. And again, I'm gonna just change the session, which is again, another copy of the original session, but with a different uh, batch of sounds. Yeah, and this time I think I've got a different drum programming there to just change it up a bit and add a bit of progression to our arrangement, our performance. You can see the automation as well that I've recorded, and that's all being represented by the LEDs flashing uh, underneath the appropriate uh, control. Now, the next section, I'm going to use the shift button in the session page, and this will allow me to change up the sound in real time. Uh, what I mean by that is that, well, I've mentioned we've got the same musical content across these three different pads, but by using the shift button, we can change at that precise moment. We can directly jump to the next uh, pattern um, halfway through a bar or a phrase or wherever we are in that. So we can get a, a really nice ability to, to um, add different dimensions to the sound using the same musical material, but just change up that sound a bit. So... Press shift and then 
use the other pads just to change up the sound a little bit and add a bit of uh, variance to that. And you can see it's jumping directly as soon as I press the, uh, the button. So it's a really nice way of, of working with music that you've already preset, stored your uh, session, you know, you've stored your sessions. But we can also get some crazy results if we just change to different uh, uh, sessions, sessions that perhaps perhaps aren't originally designed to work in that particular with that particular piece. So you can use that to, you know, just add a to add a nice effect to your performances. So after we've done a bit of the session changing, we went to the uh, last uh, session that I'd say, but it's a, pretty much a, a repeat of the intro. When I do change, you'll see how it jumps at the right point as well. It will always stay in time and we'll move to the uh, appropriate session at the appropriate time. So you'll never go out of time with that, which is, which is great. So we'll go to the, uh, the last session and I thought I'd use this as a bit of an outro. So I went to the mixer page and brought in the two different kick drum parts that we had. And um, then I went to my effects page and you can see here I've got my delays set um, as part of that session. So the extremities there, I've got the uh, slowest delay and the shortest reverb and I built those up, added the dry wet to build this up a little bit. And then in quick view mode by holding the button down I can go into session page. When I release it I'll come back out immediately. But I wanted to just quickly jump to this next session. You can see how the effects change. And now, you, if you listen to the sound, you can hear how the delay tails is, are being repitched as the speed of the delay changes. And that just felt like a really quite a nice way to, to finish off that, uh, that particular piece. So another thing that um, I haven't touched on, uh, well, I was talking through, but I did use the uh, filter control as well. And it's a really nice filter control that we have on circuit. It's a global control and it's a high pass and a low pass filter. Um, so anti-clockwise is uh, low pass and uh, 12 o'clock when the LED goes blue tells us that the filter is basically turned off. So that was the performance, a bit of a walk through how, um, how I went through you know, that short piece and how I built that up using some of the facilities that we've got with Circuit.